some time ago I had made a video on demonstrating this little handy still that I made and uh, while most people really like it uh, some people have a couple of concerns about it but I would recommend that you do upgrade this system as soon as possible so that's what we're going to do today we're going to upgrade this and it's almost as easy as the last one so we're going to keep the coil we're going to ditch this this is still usable I still use this when I clean out the coil and I clean out the coil every time before I use it with vinegar I pour vinegar in here and I steam the coil clean and then I run a couple cups of water through there and I steam it again before I even think about running any alcohol through it. So I still use this for the cleaning purpose because of the fact that this thing locks down instantly without any trouble. So now here's our upgrade. We have a stainless steel soup pot I purchased this on eBay. It came with a set of four, uh, one smaller than the other one, and it was only about $45. But we need to modify this a bit before it can be used. Uh, we need to, we're using the same fitting that we had before. Now, if you can find a stainless steel fitting, uh, go for it. Please get the stainless steel if you can't the brass this brass piece is so small and I do such extensive cleaning that I don't worry about it but if you can find stainless steel by all means grab it so to hook, hook this up the uh, old pot the old pot already had the threaded hole we just took one insert out put the other one in and it was done the soup pot has to we have to drill a hole through it and the hole has to be the right size when you have the hole drilled you can put the insert in uh, when you put the insert in you're going to have to bolt it down because it doesn't have any threads so we have this uh, copper coupler here the coupler hooks on to the fitting perfectly that's the right thread and uh, because couplers only go on so far you're going to have a space to fill up so and because this metal is so thin and flimsy and you could easily um, you could easily bend it over we've added some reinforcements by putting a washer on this side a couple washers on this side we have stainless steel washers on this side they serve two purposes. First they fill the gap. There's a little gap because you cannot put a coupler on as far as you want. It'll only go so far and stop. If you can find a stainless steel or a copper nut that screws on with the same thread, use it. If you can't, go with this. Uh, with the gap is filled and because we're, this is the inside of the pot we have stainless steel washers. On the outside I uh, didn't buy enough washers so I looked through my toolbox and I had a a nice big steel washer and that's on the outside so we're not going to worry about that. Now to make sure that we have a perfect seal you see that there's just uh, just a little bit of blue silicone. Just enough. There's none on this side of the lid. It's all on this side and that's just to create the perfect seal. If you're worried about uh, the silicone leaching into the alcohol uh, then give it the uh, break-in method that I described earlier and that's to soak it in boiling water with cinnamon powder and various spices and that'll help leach out any toxins that you might worry about. So we have that set up and uh, this fits perfectly in there looks like it did the other pot we just have to slightly modify that and all we got to do with this is just really stretch it out just a bit from what it was now then 
to operate this still, we have to do something slightly different. And we need to use an old-fashioned method that the uh, Macwood moonshiners use, and that is flour putty. To mix up some flour putty, you just need some flour and a little bit of water, and then knead it up. We're finished. I already started this one, and as you see, it's kind of sticking to my hands. So we need to. This is not stiff enough. We need to get the rest of the flour that's in here incorporated. Okay, that's about the right consistency. Now to work this. Uh, we have this. To get this set up, first you need to fill the pot with your mash or beer or wine. Second, you need to get the lid ready. And we're going to do that right now. So we'll just take a little bit and we roll it up, stretch it out. Apply a generous amount to the lid. Stretch this out a bit. of it. Okay. Now you're going to need a little bit more. I had the perfect amount for this, but you're going to need a little bit more on hand just in case uh, you have too much pressure and you get a leak. But we'll get to that in a minute. Alright, you have your mash inside the pot and you have you now have the seal on the lid. Now you then just carefully set the lid on top of the pot, push down a little bit, and that's the general start for it. To finish hooking up, because this is taller, we got to go a little taller. Okay. Now we need two wrenches this time, one to hold this steady and one to tighten it down. Okay, now that that's snug, we can finish it. The only thing to do now is to lock it down and since we don't have any locks on here, and the slightest amount of pressure will cause this to blow through. We're going to lock this down with bricks. Just simply, I have four bricks. Put one there. Put one there. Put one there. And put one there. And then you can start up your stove and begin running your mash. Also, you have to run this type of still very, very low pressure. The other still is perfectly set up for high pressures. This is not. If you get anything more than a couple of pounds of pressure, you will get the steam to start coming out through the flour. And uh, for that, I don't have a any extra to show you with but I'll show you with this you should have a little bit of extra flour putty on hand find out where the leak is turn off the stove let everything simmer down for a second take some flour putty and just 
apply it to the area and then turn your stove back on and that should take care of any leaks now because this coil is the water in here is only big enough to run this it's not it doesn't have enough cooling capability to run all of this so we also have to make an upgrade on here this is a, the end for a faucet I got this at the hardware store it simply goes on the end of your faucet just like any other piece would why because the end is tapered and go take this to the hardware guy and said I need some hose some uh, plastic hose that fits on the end of this and here we go okay we take one end of the plastic hose and we run it inside as far as we can it doesn't have to go all the way down but you know halfway is good and the hose just simply slides over the faucet end you then turn on the water and your coil starts to fill up and when and when your coil gets too hot and you need to change the water just simply pull off the hose and the water will siphon back into the sink and that'll be your hot water discharge you just need to check it every five minutes you see we're almost empty there took about 15 seconds to empty and then we just fill it back up again and you have your necessary water changes when you are finished running this the heat from the still will make this uh, flower putty rock hard and you will also when you're done it'll be uh, a lot a bit of a mess to clean up now the first thing you need to do when you're when you're cleaning this is to soak it of course and then you will need a uh, metal scouring pad nothing else will clean like this I mean you can scrape it and scrape it and scrape it all day long or you can just get one of this and be done with it in five minutes so there you go there is our still upgrade